you've got to do what's right for you and the way that it works for you. Whatever it is you want. And no man, no MGTOW can tell you you're wrong because it's right for you. And I can't stress that personalization that individualization enough because we are men we're complex we have feelings we have thoughts we have life we have experiences and we're the ones that make it happen we're the prize right and we get to decide what we do with that prize and how we're going to use it or abuse it neglect it or cherish it it being ourselves I must say, this is a damn fine cigar by Byron. You can find them on the internet, but you won't be able to get them at, uh, say, jrcigars.com, which is where I get most of my stogies from. These only come from Byron distributors. I think there's one in San Francisco and one in L.A. on the West Coast, maybe one in Florida, one in New York, one in Chicago. Not many. I don't even know if they're available internationally but a damn fine smoke. So back to the story. If any of you guys said that you needed a woman in your life and you wanted one and you would try and make it happen on your terms, there is no judgment from me. See, I think that that is important to understand is that we don't judge ourselves and we don't judge others. Men, that is. Why? Right? If a man that you know says, hey, I think I need this woman, more power to him, good luck to him. Now the MGTOW I know that say, man, I sure miss women, but I know it's a fucking losing proposition. It's completely understandable because we're driven hormonally. Right? We're a hormonal biological machine. Right? Our hormones influence our thoughts, our drive, our desires. It doesn't make it wrong, but the intellect should stop us from getting to a point where we hurt ourselves. You know, that's the trick. Now, can you help another man and say, hey, dude, she's fucking fucking you up. She's dragging you off over here. That's your prerogative as a man to help another brother understand the situation he's facing. And that's why I always say, tell other men about MGTOW. Whether they're old, whether they're young, whether they're fucking married, divorced, single, or engaged. And especially those engaged brothers we have. You know, there's nothing more discouraging than to see a man brought to his fucking knees and destroyed. Destroyed by a woman. You know, this desire we have, this love in our hearts and in our minds to, to have a woman care for her. That's used against us by women. It's used to trick us, to fool us. Right? It's used to control you, to get you to make decisions that favor her. That's the game that's played right now, because you can't own a woman. You know, but I, I bring out this story about Natalie um, because that was a chapter in my life that I closed. I got closure on it. That idea of innocence and perfection from my youth gone. You know, I was tricked out of it. But perhaps by uh, this other fella, John, tricking me out of her. I don't know what his thoughts are, because I haven't talked to him in fuck over 20 years. You know, what his thoughts were. Did he feel he was pulling a fast one? Are they divorced now? Is he fucking miserable? Right? Is he sad? Is he remorseful about what he did? Uh, does he feel guilty? Does he want to come clean? And, you know, will I forgive him? And all, you know, whatever, right? It's closure. Right? I now have closure also on my marriage. Literally through the divorce, it's closure. And my, my feelings about her and how I tried to make her understand and how I gave and gave and gave and gave as a man and how it was always rejected and never good enough. 
that has closure with me now. I can talk about it and I can drag up those emotions, those thoughts, those situations, right, and occurrences that happened. I know what was going on. Right? I can feel it. I can still remember that and taste the anger and the disappointment. But I have closure on it. So I can use it and talk about it and share and not relive it. Not in a way that hurts me. Right? But no man out there should feel ashamed. No MGTOW man should feel ashamed that he's a man inside and that we have these feelings and these thoughts. But as MGTOW we also have to realize, we have to understand that the odds of having a relationship with a woman that satisfies the man and his needs and his desire and his beliefs, it is an impossibility today because of what women know, what they've been indoctrinated with, how they've been socially conditioned, how society itself conditions itself as a, as a creature, society, as if it's its own organism, society, that is self-directing. It's, it's a horrid system. And it has destroyed, absolutely destroyed the relationship between men and women. That's the world we live in. And the intelligent man, the reasoning and logical man, accepts facts as they are. The odds of finding a woman that are going to satisfy you are one in a trillion. One in a trillion. And unfortunately, there's only four billion of the broads around. That's a damn fine scotch, I gotta tell you. This is uh, aged in two casks. The first cask was a whiskey oak cask, and the second one was an oak sherry cask uh, from Europe. And it adds a lot of complexity to the flavor of this scotch. It's got some nice woody notes. It's got a little bit of fruit to it, and I'm imagining that comes from the uh, sherry cask. Just delicious. I love good scotches. Love them. It's fascinating me to have a good scotch and to try and taste everything that the distiller put into them. Because if you think about a scotch and what it is, right? It's a distilled, right, beverage. It's whiskey. But some man bent his mind around it and said, I can use this yeast to produce alcohol and I can use this peat to impart flavor and I can use these... Uh, this malted barley, right, to give it uh, character, different levels of richness, and then the oak barrel it's aged in imparts its own virtues, and it's a man that uses his mind. <laughs> Isn't that fucking beautiful? Everything that men do is beautiful. Everything, from the cars we drive to the homes we live in, whether it's on wheels like mine or if it's attached to the ground we create a beautiful world and I took my uh, pickup here to the uh, car wash and I cleaned it up it's all shiny and sparkly it's a great vehicle I love that truck everything we do as men it, it talks about us even this cigar here the type of tobacco how it was rolled, aged, grown, cared for. Yes, even the term fermented is used for these. Aged, fermented. It's a piece of perfection. It is a piece of masculinity. Why I brought that up is in our hearts and in our minds, men have creative beauty intelligent beauty and our love is part of that the love we have the imagination the fantasy right and unfortunately for us in this time in this generation and probably for generations to come that love we have that need to care for and protect 
provide and be cared for by a woman the way we want to be cared for, it is going to remain an impossibility. And as intelligent, logical, rational beings, we have to accept that that part of us is not going to be satisfied, not in this world, not right now, because of the way women think and the way they behave. You know, they want to be free. As MGTOW, we say, fine, you want to be free? Fuck you, you're free. If you want to be owned, put a fucking collar on. Right? But they can't do that. They won't put on a collar. They won't and can't waive their rights, their privileges under government. So you can never, as a man, be fully satisfied. Not anymore, not for now, not for generations.